gotta be honest about this anime and how relatable it is. From Chibi, about a hundred girlfriends. The recent episode was actually quite emotional. Let's see what Chibi has to say. Oh, I didn't think she would actually say I love you right off the bat. Dude, he's feeling it. He's feeling it. Now, who is this relatable for? Are you relating to the lolly right now, Chibi? Or Rentaro? What's going on here? This is just such yeah. a sweet scene. Yeah. To finally see animated. If you saw me do my live stream I made, like, earlier this year or last year, I talked about how this scene in the manga would be elevated to an entirely new level when voice acting. His voice is actually shaking. Like, he is deeply moved by this, and it was a great scene. ...is applied to it. And, my god. It really is everything I said it was going to yeah. be, and better. This episode went from, like, comfy to just straight up emotional. Yeah, like, it was so chill, so casual. Oh, they're doing little book dates. Oh, I can't reach the shelf, get the book for you. And then we're just talking about books. Like, this is some Doki Doki Literature Club Yuri shit. And then suddenly, you should have never been born. Why don't you talk? Slap from the mom. I'm like, what the fuck? In just a flip of a dime. Like, yeah. just a snap of the fingers. It was a very emotional episode this character just coming to terms with someone actually accepting her for who she is and her weird habits is just very relatable i think to a lot of people i think a lot of people regardless of you know how oddball this series can be mm. with rintaro trying to get a hundred girlfriends could sit back and be like this this man really is a giga chad he yep. really is making changes in these individual people's lives making them happier and just making them better their best selves it's just and, and again like i said before it's like man rentaro is so lucky but then you guys tell me no 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 it's actually the other way around it's the girls that are lucky to have rentaro and i didn't understand that until i saw rentaro get the four leaf clovers for hakari and karane and now this episode he transcribed the entire fucking book into an ebook with voice acting so she can communicate with them like the action speaks so much louder than words and this dude actually is a giga chad it's legitimately a beautiful thing to witness and Let's just... Yeah, we went from Pocky eye jabs to titty slaps to this. Like, the past episode was so much etchy and... Sorry, not this recent episode, but the one before that of Hakane and Karane was a lot of fan service and a lot of etchy to obviously bait the attention from the audience of sex cells. Obviously, it does. Like, you gotta see the upper thigh mole from Hakare. Hakare it's an important thing, but there was none of that in this episode. And in fact, I love that. They didn't loot the lolly, and it was a very serious and emotional episode. Let's dive into this because it's just such an emotional moment and it shows a lot about, you know, Rintaro's character. It shows a lot about Shizuku or Shizuka. I, I believe that's her name. Yeah, Shizuka. And how she um, basically, how, how she felt very isolated and lonely. She felt like she was by herself. And when she meets this individual Rintaro, she thinks everything is done. It's over. She can't potentially ever be in his life and all that. She just, no. But she enjoys his company. She enjoys being able to communicate with someone, enjoying being able to just spend these very brief and just happy moments with him, sharing what she loves and enjoys. It is just such a nice and sweet bonding episode. So let's get into this. So basically, our main male character, Rintaro, he meets her in the library, and basically, he's just looking for recommendations, you know, just different recommendations, like genre, you know, different genres, like romance, etc. Horror, and maybe. You know, this character. Four ahogas. Four. What I say, guys? Four ahogas. One, two, three, four. I've never seen so many ahogas in my life. Usually, there's just one sticking out of the top of the head, but she has Four coming out from the sides. You no, know, Shizuka. She uh, is obviously a huge fan of fantasy novels. One of her favorite novels, clearly, she holds it around and has copies of it. It's a fantasy novel with some romance in it. And she's very interested. You can see her light up and excited yeah. as soon as she realizes that someone else has probably a similar interest as her. And I relate heavily with this as someone that reviews anime. And this is like manga, bro. This is like I'm finally able finding people that actually love manga or anime I can talk to, bro about manga and all yes that, and hell, just look at behind me and all that 
you know, as someone that does this often, I love talking about what drove me to even be a content creator and, like, just speak about manga and anime. I fully understand, you know, Shizuka's feelings. Cause I yeah, and, like, when you're in, like, high school, well, I'm sure it's different now, but, like, I was definitely more of a closet weeb because, like, you can't really talk about... Well, I'm especially from, like, a redneck town. I was literally the only Asian kid growing up from high school. So it's like when you bring up the topic of anime, it's not that greatly looked upon. You, they, you know, the normies are not going to think the best of your typical anime. So it's really hard to find someone to relate to. But this is like, oh, I found a fellow weeb. I remember when I was going to high school. And oh, school and all that. oh, anime club the library and I would look for the manga section. Yeah, same, nice same town had a, a manga section. There was not a lot, but there was enough to be able to like look at. Oh, this is cool. And I would used to go there and pull out some copies. And in my head, when I used to pull out manga volumes from the local library and all that, I was just like, I hope one day someone comes up and is like, oh, I like that too. Because in that day and era, when never happened when i was going to high school middle school no manga and anime it was kind of shunned like you know yeah like, dragon ball was kind of talked about pokemon was kind of talked about yeah these shonen series like everybody loves dragon ball right everybody loves pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. you some og series but if you were to bring up like let's say high school dxd back then i wonder how it would be accepted but overall you were just kind of like a weirdo if mm. you even remotely associated yeah. with any of that type of stuff like naruto was pretty back then in high school too i don't think naruto was very fondly looked upon by the mass like it's not like like it's not really cool like like dragon ball i don't think people would the normies would consider it an anime it's more like a cultural like iconic art but when you mention like naruto or like bleach i don't think it would it's cool but not really cool to the normies right and so i was always hoping maybe one day that I would be able to have that conversation, be able to communicate with someone, etc. Sadly, that never happened. But thankfully, thanks to that, it drove me to be a YouTuber to be able to talk with all of you guys online. But basically, the point of the matter is, is that, you know, Shizuka as a character, I fully understand her emotion and that happiness of being able to communicate with someone, with someone that enjoys the very same thing you do. Yeah. And so this is a very endearing moment when she gets extremely excited. She starts looking around for what she could recommend, what she, you know, she wants someone else to read and tell their thought. It would have been kind of funny if she recommended him degenerate shit. I mean, obviously the school library is not going to have that, but like that would have been like a, an interesting fan service to do. It's like Shizuka actually loves like lewd books. So that's like a one way to do fan service without looting the lolly herself. It's, on it. it's like me when I'm talking about some of my favorite things, my favorite anime or manga that I constantly look into. I, I feel this exact same way. You get this fluffy emotional feeling and Shizuka really just embodies that emotion very well and I think this is very relatable to a lot of people because this doesn't necessarily need to be about anime and manga this could just be about gaming or just anything you're just interested in yeah. I feel like you know everybody's been there everybody's happy when they're able to meet a, a kindred spirit to talk about what they actually have like a and that's the thing with even anime reactions or like this stuff too because like why do you think people like reactions even though people shit on reactions for lazy content I agree it is extremely lazy content i literally turn the anime on turn the webcam on and i just watch myself and i record myself watching anime and upload it onto youtube and people are baffled that people would watch other people's reactions to an anime but here's the thing fundamentally all human beings are social creatures that wants to share experiences when you come out of a movie, what happens in the movie theater lobby? The first thing people do is like, what did you think about this scene? What did you think about that scene? Everybody loves to share and talk about a common interest. And when you have, and I'm going to the anime reaction part, that's why people love anime reactions because it's lazy content, but lazy does not equate to, uh, let's say, entertainment. It's not directly proportional. Lazy content can be very entertaining, and I think reaction content is a prime example of that. And then going back to here with Shizuka, right? When you find someone that loves your books, something to have some common interest is, it actually gets you out of your shell beyond the trauma, beyond the shell of trauma we even knew existed. This episode was actually so emotional so dramatic not nah, it, it was it dramatic there was dramatic moments but compared to the first two episodes this is a different type of episode and by its own means i think it was a masterpiece passion they have yeah. so after all this goes down and all that rintaro you know he goes home he reads this novel he gets really into it and all that and that like, dragon fighting sequence this, is decent like, he actually like kind of starts crying like this man legit cries reading yeah the novel. <laughs> he got <laughs> so immersed like that's me, dude. Like, when I'm, like, uh, at late at night, like, even in this episode, I actually kind of cried. 
But, like, when I am sitting up late at night or in the middle of the day or whatever, and I'm reading a good book or something, I will cry. And I know people like to say you shouldn't cry or whatever, but look, I I'm a man enough to... Real men don't cry. They hide their emotion, they bottle it up, and they let it fucking explode when they're in their 40s and they beat their anyways. I think men should be able to cry. It's like, it's so bad when you bottle up feelings. Like, being able to cry is a very healthy mechanism of your body to just go through all those emotions. But if you bottle that shit up, nah, not and a good idea. I cry, and I get really invested in literature. Yeah. And I'll just straight up start crying if it's a really good book. Even crying tears of happiness, because it's yes. just that enjoyable. Last time I cried watching an anime, actually a week ago. Captain Tsubasa, the soccer anime, yes. A soccer anime about a bunch of elementary school kids playing soccer. Yes, it is fucking amazing. And so I related with Rintaro here as well, with just him really enjoying the content that he was reading. He's like, man, this is a really damn good book. And so he goes back, you know, and he communicates to Shizuka that, you know, he likes it and all that. He likes the books. He wants the second book. And as they continue to communicate, you know, she Volume two. basically lets him know that, uh, yeah, I can't really communicate properly. I can only talk through the words of a book. And she basically has never been able to really make friends or anything like that because her habits as an individual is to where she's just very shy. She's very introverted, and she's not able to properly communicate her thoughts to anyone. She's a mute. She can speak. She just chooses not to because she's yeah. just so shy and scared. And so everything about this moment showcases, like, the troubles and hurdles she's had through life. She is someone that obviously is not able to make a bond or communication with someone or even talk about her hobbies or habits. This is mom's fault, man. This is actually all mom's fault. Yes, the girls bullied her in the bathroom, but that mom fucking slaps Yuzuka saying, why can't you speak? Why are you like this? Like, bro, what kind of parent does that? It's fucking insane. People, because she just doesn't speak. And so, once again, this kind of shows the message of Rentaro entering into her life because, you know, it's the first time she's ever probably had, well, we know for a fact, the first time she's ever had someone she could communicate with and enjoy you know, conversation about some of the things she loves. It's very beautiful. And so Renzaro, he decides to take the book, and many days pass and all that since he sees her, and you can kind of see as time goes. That shit was sad. When, like, days passed, and, like, Shizuka was waiting for Renzaro to show up to get the second book, but day one, day two, day three, he doesn't show up, and she's starting to give up on him, and it's like, no, you don't understand. He is doing something you can't comprehend. Trust, trust. And then she finds him with Karane and Hakari, and I'm like, no, but it's... The best part there was... Even Karane and Hakari were like, what were you doing? You're like so gone these days. It's because he was doing this for Shizuka, transcribing the book. Goes on. She is thinking about Rintaro. She's growing feelings for him. But what's sad is, is that she realizes that, you know, he already has yeah, actual two girlfriend. girlfriends. He's already yeah, you're number him, three. You're number three. Sad about that. Yeah. And she also just realizes that, you know, maybe she was looking too deep into it. And that part fucking sucks. You ever have like a crush on like a girl or something and you think that you guys got not nice thing going on, but it turns out... She was just being nice to you. There was nothing really romantic going on. And you might be trying to look for her somewhere, and then she's, like, hanging out with a different dude, and you're like, <laughs> I see how it is. That's exactly how she felt. And that, you know, maybe he doesn't really care about her, etc. And because time, many days have passed, and she was, she's getting worried. But when he finally calls her and all that, and he, like... He's like, hey, you know, this is the book. I put it all as an ebook on an app for you can be able to yep. read. He adds a all voice acted. He communicates with an AI. And once again, this is very simple. Like, okay, it's not simple what he did, but it's like communicating through like a synthesized voice kind of is simple in this day and age. But the point is, is that it's the it's the effort that he put in to do this. It's the time investment he did just for Shizuka to do this that speaks out in volumes. Rentaro's actions. Everything he does to the girls, he is just so fucking cool. Rintaro went above and beyond and yep. wrote the entire book down on his phone, word by word, imagine his poor fingers, to be able to import this into an app where she can use it to communicate and be able to look at someone's face. Something so simple, something so, I guess, something that would just change her life. It's a life-changing moment, but he spent days doing this, and it's a very beautiful thing and it's it so touching his character as well is that he's not just doing this because you know he's forced to because you know if they don't get with him they'll die they do die but right? but, but he's doing this because he legitimately wants to help and care for yeah people. yeah he does and it shows what type of person he is he's not you know a scumbag he's not seeking you know i guess like pat me on the back and all that
there has not really been any moments like etchy moments like in high school dxd like Issei looks at Rias's titties and his eyes flare up and only thinks about his titties and groping them but like rentaro's never had those kind of moments he has seen you know i, I don't know some fan service some hakari or karane and he's thinking oh my god that's a lot of that but he's never had these ulterior motives he's such like a pure wholesome giga chad and i'm doing a good deed he doesn't want that he's just an individual that really is just trying to make people happy and it makes him a very enjoyable character i know yep. people are quick to say the situation of 100 girlfriends is not realistic it's you know no fucking shit there's 100 girlfriends and if you don't give love to a girl after you meet they die what part of that sounds realistic to you <laughs> Feasible. It's not something that would happen. And yes, duh. At the end of the day, this is a literal god shows up and tells you, "Hey, you're about to have a hundred girlfriends. If you didn't, if you, if you don't give attention to one, they'll die." What part of that did you possibly think was realistic? Fantasy story. It's a book. But can we not enjoy just something that is very wholesome when it is wholesome? And that, that's mm. what's so cool about it. Just it's really nice, a fresh of, you know, a breath of fresh air, having a character that legitimately just cares about people. There's nothing else he wants, no ulterior motives, just wants to benefit them and help them out. They yes. Just, it's beautiful. Genuinely cares direction. for them. And so just like this episode of 100 Girlfriends is legitimately just sweet. It is a sweet episode, extremely cute. And Rin Taro basically saying, like, you know, she's going to be added to the group, obviously, creates the... Look at those eyebrows, man. Look how bold and manly those eyebrows are. What a giga chad. Love triangle into a love rectangle, but, uh, or a love square, but it is just very sweet. It all ends well, super adorable, and I'm just, I'm happy. I'm just, I'm happy by this adaptation. I love yep. how she's coming right down here. Look at her face. It's so cute. But I just... I, I love this adaptation. They have done such a good job with it. There's no other words that really can describe it besides that. It's just, it's good. It's a legitimate good it's show. It's goaded. Yep. And I knew this was potentially going to be a good show because the manga was so good. I'm not up to date with it for clarification. I know things, but I'm not up to date with it. But uh, I do like this series. This this is just legitimately good. But okay, I'm going to... Dub video from Chibi as usual. Go like it if you like. But this video, uh, sorry, this series, 100 Girlfriends, of all the weekly series we're watching right now, I think this surpasses Eminence and Shadow maybe for me. It's a different type of series for sure. Maybe you you can't even directly compare it, so I actually won't compare it. But of all this weekly series I'm watching right now, definitely one of the most enjoyable series. Initially, it's a lot of ecchi and harem, right? It's, it's a lot of fan server with Hakari's thighs. Yeah, you see that episode two was fucking crazy. The cat was going like this to Karane's panties, you know? Like, that shit was crazy. But obviously, sex sells, and the author is trying to hook the audience so that they get the initial impact from, oh my god, look at those thighs. And then we get a sweet episode, it's like episode three. Completely different style. No fan service, nothing of that sort. Purely just a story dedicated towards Rentaro helping Suzuka out. Shizuka's past so traumatic. Her mom fucking telling her, she didn't say, why were you born? But she basically lashing out on her. I cried for this lull. I had no idea who she was. I have no emotional attachment. But because of how chill and happy the first two episodes were, and so then to a certain extent, so was the first half of the last episode with Shizuka's intro. That difference between chill, happy, just nonsensical fun to a dramatic moment, it just caught me off guard was such an emotional moment. I think that people will overlook this anime because it's a harm, because it's an edgy. They think, 100 girlfriends? Sounds fucking dumb. Why am I going to watch that shit? I'm going to just stick to my... My Eminence and Shadow, my other hype shows, it is what it is. And you know what? If it's romance isn't really your theme, then go for it. But I think this show is a beautiful show. And people might be kind of shitting on it for the premise of 100 Girlfriends. And yes, he will have 100 Girlfriends. But that's not the point. The point is, the lolly's very cute. Head pass. By the way, we'll do these live reactions on stream 7 a.m. every morning. So hope to see you there. Bye-bye.